If you've been watching the channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I'm not the biggest GNOME fan in the world. There are many reasons for that. It's just years of experience of going through and trying to make GNOME work for me just hasn't worked. And that's mostly a me problem. I'll be right up front and say that the reason why GNOME doesn't work for me is just because I prefer Plasma better. That's just the way it is. And that's perfectly fine. That's the way Linux is supposed to work. That's why we have choice and why Linux is so amazing. You don't like one thing, go use something else. That's great, right? But Ubuntu is the most popular Linux distribution out there. I don't care what DistroWatch says. Ubuntu has the most users by far, probably combined. There's probably more people who use Ubuntu or an Ubuntu-based flavor than use all other Linux distributions combined. I would probably say that that's true. I don't have any real numbers to back that up, but I feel like that's the case. With that, with that being the way it is, I feel it's important to think about how Ubuntu portrays itself and as puts itself out to the Linux desktop community. Now, we should just say this, that the desktop for Ubuntu is not a priority. It hasn't been for years, uh, and that's just the way it is. They don't make any money on the Ubuntu desktop. Their money comes from the server area. So any changes that go into the desktop are mostly community related. And while they do obviously put a lot of effort into it, the small desktop team does put a lot of effort into the Ubuntu desktop, it's still not the priority of Canonical at large. So the changes that I'm suggesting are more the reasons why I think they should change probably aren't going to happen, and maybe they shouldn't even happen. These are all my opinions, so I just thought I would put them out there. So today I'm going to be talking about five reasons why I think Ubuntu should ditch GNOME. The first reason is that GNOME isn't the most customizable desktop out there. In fact, I would say that other than Elementary OS, the Pantheon desktop, GNOME is actually the least customizable desktop out there. And I'm not saying that you can't customize it. There's tons of stuff you can do if you work hard enough for it. But in terms of actually wanting to go through and change themes, fonts, cursors, all that kind of stuff, there are hurdles in the way of doing that. And even the tweaked version of GNOME that Ubuntu uses is not as customizable as, say, something like Plasma. Now, maybe Plasma takes it too far. Like, if you want to customize in pla something in Plasma, you can do so because there's tons and tons of settings and it's very complicated and complex and all that stuff. So maybe Plasma takes it too far and GNOME doesn't go far enough, but there seems to be, there sh or there should be, a middle ground there. And customizability, I think, is important after you've been using Linux for a while, because once you've used Linux and you've gotten your apps and stuff together, you want to experience the things that make Linux great. And one of the things that makes Linux great is the ability to customize your desktop, uh, make it look the way you want it to look and work the way you want it to work. And for years, GNOME has been very anti-customization. They block the ability to use themes because they consider it a hack, which it probably is. Technologically speaking, it is. Same thing with icons and all that stuff. They make you install a custom uh, app called GNOME Tweaks in order to do a lot of the stuff that you sh probably should be able to do right out of the box. And that's the same with the Ubuntu stuff. Even if they've added some customizability into it, it still hasn't gone the full, way, you know, the, the whole way there. The extensions system that GNOME and Ubuntu uses is also very... Stepchildy is not a word, but it feels like it's the weird cousin that you don't want to talk about and shows up to reunions every now and then. And the reason why it feels like that is like they have an extensions app, but you don't install extensions from there. You have to install them from a browser using a browser add-on with a certain package installed that you install from the terminal. And all it, it, it's a rigmarole to get an extension installed for the first time. And then it's a little bit easier after that, but... The first time is just a pain in the ass. And it, for years, it felt like GNOME just didn't want you to use extensions at all. And I think that that's true. With the invention of the extensions app, it feels like they're paying a little bit more attention to extensions because they realize that they've taken so many features out of GNOME over the years that extensions are kind of necessary. But still, it feels very much like they don't want you to use these things. They want you to use GNOME the way they want you to use it. And for them, there's no other way. Now, moving that into the Ubuntu sphere, 
Ubuntu has tried their hardest to go through and ma and make GNOME uh, usable for their vast number of users. They've added a light and dark theme, which is not something you get in GNOME without using GNOME tweaks. Uh, they've added a few extensions to make things you know usable, like desktop icons and a and a icon tray up in the bar. You know these things that. All desktop environments have because they're things that people use and GNOME feels for whatever reason people shouldn't have these things and that's one of the reasons why I think that Ubuntu should use something else uh, because GNOME likes to take features out of GNOME instead of adding features they're very feature they're very anti-feature and much more focused on maintaining the status quo Let's put it that way. So the second reason is that the GNOME Foundation is horrible. <laughs> and this is for many reasons. One of them is that they are they don't seem to be interested in advancing GNOME in any way. Now, this is more of an argument before GNOME 40 came out. GNOME 40 at least shows some pro signs of change and progress and stuff, but it's still very much GNOME. But outside of that, GNOME, you know... GNOME politically, I don't really like talking politics on the channel, but some of their political stuff is just not great. And the fact that they're involved politically is probably the biggest problem. I don't care what their political ideals are, but if you're running a FOSS software uh, system or whatever, don't get involved in politics at all because that's not you know where you should be and it feels more like GNOME lately has become a political organization rather than a software organization and that's a problem I feel um, especially because if you're Ubuntu you're being associated with the GNOME Foundation's politics and maybe they don't care maybe they agree or whatever uh, I noticed a lot of the people who work on Ubuntu signed that letter for the Richard Stallman stuff but you know so maybe they don't care that the GNOME Foundation has these political ideas and isn't shy to, shy to share them. So personally, I feel that the the GNOME Foundation tarnishes itself by having political ideals at all. But that's just, again, my feeling. So the third reason kind of relates to the first one I talked about is that Cinnamon is better. Now, I'm not a big fan of the Cinnamon desktop either, but that's just m more of my, um, a me problem again. But for people who come from Windows, Cinnamon is actually better because I feel that it's more like Windows. If you're moving from Windows to Ubuntu, they don't look anything alike. And there's a lot of things there that might confuse you. Uh, and I also think that Cinnamon is more user-friendly. It's also more, because it's more customizable, it's very good for people who aren't straight out of the box Linux noobs and they will be able to go through and customize their desktop much easier than they can with uh, GNOME. So Cinnamon I think is the prime candidate for a replacement for GNOME. Now some would say that that's an argument to use Linux Mint. That's a perfectly reasonable argument. Personally I think that Linux Mint has its own problems, so we won't even get into that. So, the fourth reason is something that I've talked about a little bit already, is that the GNOME Foundation and the people who develop GNOME are feature... They're not feature forward, they're feature, they're feature backwards. GNOME is spending time taking features out of their desktop environment, while Ubuntu has had to spend time working on extensions and tweaks to their settings panel and stuff to enable features that should have been there out of the box. Other desktop environments like Plasma and Cinnamon and even Mate, which is based on a paradigm that's 15 years old, uh, they spend time putting features in. You know, they spend time making their desktop environments better instead of trying to desperately hold on to that, that status quo. Now, like I said, this argument was much better before GNOME 40 because GNOME 40 did show that they are at least willing to make some changes. I've used GNOME 40, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's not a big paradigm shift away from what GNOME has been since GNOME 3 was installed, you know, came out. It's still very much GNOME. It's still, this is the way you're going to use GNOME, and if you don't like it, don't use GNOME. That's the, rate, the way it seems to be. It's still very much hard to customize. So, 
the fifth reason that Ubuntu should ditch GNOME is performance. Now, GNOME has gotten much better and much faster over the years. It used to be very, very slow. I mean, like, com you know, almost completely unusable slow in terms of, like, animations and stuff taking forever and all this stuff. But that stuff has gotten better. It's still not as fast as other desktop environments. And even past the whole speed thing, if you're looking at a low resource system, Ubuntu is not a great choice because it takes a lot of resources to run GNOME. Almost always a gigabyte right out of the box. Like that's idle right after startup. You're going to use between 800 megabytes and a gigabyte of RAM in order to run GNOME. That's just the way it is. And that's the way it's been for ages. It used to be more than that. It used to be well over a gigabyte. So they pared it down a little bit. But again, they did that by taking features out. And they're still at a gig. And that's not a great thing. Now, obviously, if you're on a seriously system, if your system is seriously constrained on resources, chances are Ubuntu is not the best option for you anyways. It has nothing to do with GNOME. You should probably go with something like LXQt or XFCE. You know, Ubuntu probably is what I mean. Those systems are much more tailored towards systems that are resource constrained. So this whole argument that Ubuntu should be lighter on its feet, maybe not the best one. But I feel that even on systems that have a ton of resources, using a gig out of the box is not the greatest thing in the world. Especially when it leads to poor performance in other areas like uh, startup times and launch times of the applications and stuff like that. So And, and that stuff all plays into it. And that's mostly a GNOME problem. Now, there's a whole Snap thing that goes on. The, the uh, Ubuntu uses Snaps for a lot of their programs. And those things are slow and always have been slow. They have gotten better, but they're still much slower. So that part there has nothing to do with GNOME. But add it all together and it feels much slower than it should be. So those are the five reasons I think that Ubuntu should ditch GNOME. I do have two reasons why they should stick with GNOME. The first one is that is something that I mentioned before we started, is that hardly anyone uses the Linux desktop anyways, and the server side is where Canonical makes all their money. Uh, so what they choose really doesn't matter. And, and add on top of that, there's so much choice out there in terms of the Linux desktop. If they don't change, they're not gonna and they lose people using the desktop, it's not gonna matter to them monetarily. And because there are other options, if you don't like GNOME, you can go use something else. So, really, none of this stuff really matters. So, what I was saying is this video is pointless. Um, but what else is new? Also, like in, in a similar, you know, point or whatever, in the long run, it would probably would seem to canonical that switching to a different desktop environment would be a waste of resources because so many people, so few people, would be affected by it. So, and the second one is probably the biggest one. The reason why they should just stick with GNOME is that users hate change. If you're using GNOME right now and on Ubuntu, chances are you like it. Uh, maybe you have some you know, complaints about it, but you don't dislike it enough to move away. So, if you like the look and feel of Ubuntu, chances are you won't want them to change, and you'd probably be pissed off if they did. So, uh, those people who don't like Ubuntu and have the same arguments that I have have probably already moved away from Ubuntu or used one of the flavors or whatever. Uh, so people don't like change and that's probably the best reason for them just to stay where they are. So it's also an argument against them being able to change in the first place. I don't think that at this point Ubuntu can actually change away from GNOME without making a huge, you know, political or not maybe not political, but public relations nightmare for a lot of the people who, you know, they depend on. So, those are the reasons why I think that Ubuntu is probably going to stick with GNOME. I gave you five reasons why I think they should get ditch GNOME. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Uh, let me know if you think they should stick with GNOME. If so, why? If you think they should switch, switch away, what should they switch to? Uh, I'm really interested to know what y'all think. So, thanks for watching. You can follow us on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can also follow us on Facebook at LinuxCast. And you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Make sure you leave a like and a subscribe and hit the notification icon bell. And I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Maglin, Donnie, Sven, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks everybody for your support. Thank you for watching. 
I'll see you next time.